Watch our Facebook fan. It's your brother Ben JW. About the walk and talk. Nasty cardio. This morning. A couple of minutes. About to do my city. Walk and talk. Couple minutes around twenty five, twenty one. So I changed my uh, I changed my route uh, to my building, and it was just my blessing that I I see. So, yeah, so I changed my route to my building. Because my schedule has changed, I was trying to factor in my fasting cardio. You know, which I prefer to do. I prefer to do my casting my fasting cardio in the a.m. And I'm getting up first thing. So because one situation arise, but this is how God has been working in my life. There's always an undercover blessing right behind it. So the undercover blessing is I have the opportunity to get in my fasting cardio so I start at a certain point in New Orleans and it takes me about 30 minutes, you know, to walk to my building, which is fine. That's kind of what I shoot for in my cardio, 30 minutes. And any of you guys that's trying to lose weight, I'm going to be talking about the positive effects of fasting more often. And during our How to Eat to Live Series 101, we're going to be looking at the physiological effect, biological and psychological effects of fasting. It's prescribed for you. <clears throat> so right now, I'm on a I'm on an intermittent fasting program. Uh, I haven't been consistent because my home environment has changed a couple of times, but I think I have figured it out with me adjusting to my schedule and getting back to what really matters, which is health and wellness, spirituality, health and wellness is my target, focus right now. And I feel like I should bring you guys on this journey because if you've been following me, Your brother fell off due to life circumstances. And because of that, I'm in the same boat with you guys. You know that need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. I need to get back into shape. And I'm going to bring you guys on this journey with me. But first and foremost, let's talk diet and nutrition. Let's talk how to eat to live. Let's talk psychological urge versus physiological urge. Um, uh, so to begin with, 
you know, I always have to talk about a, 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 a sociological or societal issue. And I would just have to say, a certain segment of our population need help in a in a real way because it's 2023 and I don't see no improvements. Everywhere I go throughout this city, a certain segment of our population causes problems. So this is why I'm going to really, 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 really plan this on an up and coming broadcast. I'm going to put myself in the shoes of different ethnic groups. And I'm going to go down the list, you know, from what I've learned and what I've observed throughout my lifetime. I believe the spirit is leading me to do this. Because it must be said, in order for you to understand other groups of people, sometimes you have to put yourself in their shoes so you can view things in a way how they might possibly view things. And from yesterday, To today, you know, even my Uber driver, I mean, it's, it's four o'clock in the morning. It's 4.30 in the morning and my Uber driver is playing this rap music with profanity. Now you in a customer service role, you picking up the public. And you playing with curse words, like like it's nothing. Yesterday, you know, sometimes I change my route up, you know, of of how I move about the city. So yesterday, I was on public transportation here in New Orleans. And if anybody's been in New Orleans, you know our streets are are like, you know what I mean. It's not in that good of a shape. And typically where this bus stop is, you know what I mean, the road is uneven. So what happens is, is the bus is too high up in the air. And I ask this person, can you lower your step? You know, looked at me real stupid. And then this dude lowered his step. So I board the bus and I say, thank you. You know what this dude asked me? Stu said, do you have a disability? I'm like, huh? I said, do you have to have a disability for you to lower this step? I asked my question. I said, uh, you're not answering my question. Do you have to have a disability for you to lower this step? Back and forth. I told him something, he told me something. And I said, yeah, I mean, well, that's your answer. I shouldn't even have to ask you. This is fucking yesterday. Also yesterday, I was on my way back to home base. And 
I was like, damn, do I have bread? Do I have, you know what I mean? But I forgot I went to I went to the grocery store and, and, and had these items. So I stopped over at this convenience store because one thing I try to keep stocked is water. It's like, man, I didn't get some spring water. I know this didn't have no gallon spring water. I didn't want to buy no 24 pack. So I asked, I asked this person at the, at the freaking register. Bread first. I was like, and and then after that, I was like, do you guys have gallon spring water? I had that. I said, God. oh, yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, boy. So, I'm reflecting back on my experience. And I'm like, boy, a certain segment of our population need help now. In 2023, we're still struggling with the same accident, pleading and Oh, let me take your hand and you should. I'm at a point in my life right now that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that other segments of the population are no better. They're not. But I need to start here because this, this, this is an issue where you shouldn't be talking about about somebody that share the same hue of you that behave and 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 act amongst each other. And this is the, this is 2023. So I posted this before I was like ever since I moved to New Orleans I feel like I have to be a freaking complaints lawyer. At first, I was like, boy, I don't have time out the day to do it. But now I feel like I'm going to make time because these people need to be held accountable. And uh, depending on how far I decide to take these issues, I'm going to definitely let you know that you need to improve your customer service skills, your people skills, um, etiquette, respect. Yeah. So that's what I'm on. So now, like how I plan my workout, my Synergy Fitness 365 appointments, S365 book club and different things that we're doing. The same thing. I'm scheduling time to hold these people accountable. I got a long list of things. You know what I mean? From a legal perspective, just general things that need to be talked about that I will definitely handle if it be the will of God. So, so when I reflect back on my days, I'm like, oh, this is, I mean, it's a hair scratcher, but it's not a hair scratcher. <laughs> it's a hair scratcher, but it's not a head scratcher. Meaning that I'm old enough to know the cause and effect of what I'm seeing. It's just I'm at the point. I'm not sweeping it under no rug. No more. I'm not just letting it pal. Oh, man, I got stuff to do. I ain't got time. Yeah, I got time. So I'm putting New Orleans on notice. putting a cer certain segment of our population on notice. I'm really putting everybody that don't hold 
you know, their side or their end in terms of proper handling of people, customer service, doing your job, what the public is paying you for. But you don't know it. Yesterday I did a uh I did a walk and talk. Cause I'm doing cardio. I'm gonna try to at least do cardio every day. Twice. 30 minutes in the morning. 30 minutes in the evening. Along with my intermittent fasting. I'm gonna try to get in resistance at least three to four times a week. I'm going to see how that rolled. But based on what I did yesterday, man, I feel good this morning. All praises be to the G.O.D. So yesterday I did a I did a talk about an experience I had with a person. And I thought about this again this morning and yesterday. I was like, boy, this person didn't even have enough support in their heart. So when I mentioned our social media uh, platforms to go on and check it out, talk about it, share, like, comment, you know, and this person for months. But it just so happened. Out of the blue, and this and, and this and this kind of letting me know I should continue doing what I'm doing. Because most people, I, some people I talk to about social media, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't. Just my, you know what I'm saying? Me, and my kids. So it just so happens this person goes on social media and just so happens be lurking around my my Facebook page. And they caught a broadcast I did about the non-supporter so-called family and friends. And that was the subject. I didn't mention no names, no none of that. I was really focused on the behavior, not really personally attacking a person. But it just so happens this person that don't go on social media, uh, don't know, I don't, I don't go, I don't do nothing on social. And I'm finding those people that say that are what I call lurkers. Lurkers are people that's trying to watch to see what you're doing. And it's so idiotic and immature. A lurker will just watch and see what you're doing. Don't support your page. I mean, you can't press a like with their finger or a share or nothing. Or no commentator. But they lurk, right? And they tell you, oh, I don't go on social media. So it just so happens this person sent me a long email. And I may, I may, I may bring this up. I don't, I don't know, in another broadcast, I might just leave it alone. Depends on how I feel. So it just so happens this person go on the Facebook page and they listen to one of our broadcasts and they're like, damn, why this person talking about me? So, so they were. So they sent me a text, yeah. I, I saw what you I saw what you said on your on your Facebook live. I'm like, damn, I thought you not, huh? I thought you wasn't on. <laughs> and all it is, man. I was like, man, lurkers. You know, so beware lurkers. Because the people really be on social media probably more than you be on. You know, but they just see and, and see what you're doing. And 
You know what I mean? It's really silly. So that's why, to be very honest with you, I blocked this person. Because I'm like, damn, boy, this, this person know me, we talk. You know what I'm saying? You know? You know what I mean? Looked like they wanted personal training, but, you know, kind of went off and did something else. And that was cool. I was like, okay. So maybe we could just be friends. I tried to do that. I was telling this person about our book club. No support. No no interest, but yet you trying to know me. Man, so you trying to get to know me and you have no interest or support of what we doing on social media. I'm not asking you to hop up in your coin, go drive no way and go, damn. Like you can't click on the link. Like, you can't click on the link and watch the Mental Health Ministry podcast, share it with your friends, talk about it, subscribe. Can't do that. I'm talking about button, a button. I'm like, man, no. Let me back up. You know, whatever this person goes and objective with this interaction with me, I'm not clear on it because if I would put myself in this person's shoes, what time it is? Oh, I'm good. So if I would put myself in this person's shoes, I would be like, man, oh, you got to. Oh, you got a podcast? I mean, just, 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 just me. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Oh, what is it? Oh, oh, let me go check it out. I would go check it out, you know. And if I'm getting to know you, I'ma like it. I'ma share it, and I'ma subscribe. You don't even have to tell me. Matter of fact, the next time we talk, I'ma be like, uh, yeah. You know, I checked out your podcast and it was interesting. You know, I joined, you know, your book club. Uh, You know, I mean, I ordered the book, whatever. (laughs) You know, you know, I'm trying to lose weight. How can I join the body by benefit? I mean, just, you know. I'm like, man, this person is not supportive. So so what you really want out of this interaction? You can't really, you know I mean? You can't really be a part of what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And not being critical and just, but I'm just saying. I mean, you just can't be a part of what I'm doing because this stays in my life. Once I get stuff off my mind and heart, and then there's no uh, adjustment or willing to understand, Man, that's a wrap. I'm not. Because at the end of the day, you know, this is when I'm learning. It's always been me and the G.O.D. And it will always be me and the G.O.D. Meaning that people come and they go, even if they start out right. It's a possibility they may veer off track. The only consistent absolute is God. And the person that's been kind of really struggling with depression, you know, I mean, nearly, you know, I mean, nearly all my life. When I got that point down, uh, that helped. You know, which means people, I'm talking including family and friends, they come and they go. The only absolute consistent is God. (laughs) 
And when I start to understand that, operating within a dysfunctional family, operating within a dysfunctional segment of our population, operating against oppression, racism, people come and go, start out good, they can veer off on the wrong track. So that's relationships and everything. So I remain optimistic, but at the end of the day, people can come and go. I'm speeding on that thing. You know what I mean? People can come and go. But God is the only absolute consistent figure, entity, person that's going to be in your life. So with that being said, this is your brother, Ben JW. I'm headed up to my building. I think that was 30 minutes, right? Fasting cardio and an empty stomach. I got it in. Uh, check me out later on in the day. I think we're doing a How to Eat to Live one-on-one broadcast at 7.30 Central Time today. Peace out.